In this video, we'll look at number 14, which is a linear programming word problem. Jill's bakery sells cakes and cookies. To pay her employees, Jill must sell at least 20 cakes and at least 30 batches of cookies per day. Due to her limited daily supply of eggs, she can make no more than 50 cakes and no more than 60 batches of cookies. The total number of items baked, cakes and cookies combined, cannot exceed 100. If the profit for each cake is $6.50 and each batch of cookies is $7.25, how many of each item should Jill bake to maximize her profit? So we wanna know how many cakes and how many batches of cookies should Jill make? The variables are already defined for you. We'll let X be the number of cakes and Y be the number of batches of cookies. And now what we need to do for our first step here Step one is find the constraints. For the constraints, you wanna look for key information from your system. Don't worry about the profit. We can't do the profit until the end. So those dollar amounts are not gonna be part of your constraints. What we are gonna do though, is we're gonna look right here. So to pay her employees, Jill must sell at least 20 cakes and at least 30 batches of cookies. At least means that many or greater. So we have greater than or equal to. So at least 20 cakes would be cakes is X. So I would go X greater than or equal to 20. At least 30 batches of cookies. Cookies are the Y. So I need Y is greater than or equal to 30. Let's look at the next sentence now. Due to her limited daily supply of eggs, she can make no more than 50 cakes and no more than 60 batches of cookies. No more means you cannot go over that number, so we need to be less than or equal to. For cakes, cakes was X, so no more than 50 cakes. We're gonna go X less than or equal to 50. And then for the no more than 60 batches of cookies. Cookies is Y, so I need Y to be less than or equal to 60. Now there's one final constraint here. The total number of items baked, cakes and cookies combined, cannot exceed 100. That means if you add up the number of cakes with the number of cookies, it cannot go over 100. So that's gonna be X plus Y, less than or equal to 100. And that again is the combined total. So now that we have our constraints, we are ready to go and make our graph. Recall that when it's x equal a number, it's always a vertical line that hits x at that value. And when it's y equals a number, it's a horizontal line. So most of the lines in this problem are either horizontals or verticals. For x is greater than or equal to 20, that's a vertical line that hits x at 20. So put a dot at 20 and then grab your ruler and make a straight line. There we go. So that is going to be the line x is greater than or equal to 20. I think it helps if you label your lines. That'll help you shade at the end. For y greater than or equal to 30, make sure for y's you got to switch to horizontal lines. So we're going to start at 30 on the y-axis and we're going to take our rulers or straight edge and make a line through there. So that is the y greater than or equal to 30 marker. Let's move on to the x is less than or equal to 50. Back to x, so we're back to a vertical line. We find the 50 on the x. We take our ruler and we make a straight line through 50. So that is the inequality x is less than or equal to 50. The y less than or equal to 60, y is back to horizontal, so I'm going to find 60 on my y-axis, and then we'll take a ruler or straight edge and make a straight horizontal line through the 60. There we go, so that is y is less than or equal to 60. Okay, so right now if you think about where we're at, we got to be bigger than 20 on x but less than 50. So we're going to be between these two vertical lines, Greater than, greater than or equal to 20, but less than or equal to 50. And then for these horizontal lines, I have to be greater than or equal to 30, but less than or equal to 60. So right now, if I didn't have that last constraint, it would really just be this like box in the middle. 
but we do have one more constraint to do. And for this one, I can use the cover up trick since it's in standard form. The nice part about this is if we do the cover up trick, if you cover up the Y there, you just have X. So X equals 100 is gonna be our X intercept. Same for Y, if we cover up the X, we have Y equals 100. Those are the intercepts, so you're gonna do 100 is your X intercept, and then 100 is also your Y intercept, and then you can take your ruler, straight edge, and connect those together. Now let's think about our shading. So for the X is greater than or equal to 20, we gotta be to the right of 20. And then we gotta be less than or equal to 50. So we're gonna be between the two vertical lines. Same thing for the two horizontal lines, greater than or equal to 30, so above the 30, but less than or equal to 60. Now the last inequality there where we did the cover up trick is a less than or equal to. So we need to stay below that slanted line. So I need to stay right in here. So I just colored in my feasible region. The reason I did not color in this little triangle up here is because that little triangle is not below the slanted line. We have to stay entirely below that purple line that I drew, so I can't have that little triangle in the corner. What I get is a feasible region now with five vertices. There's like five corners to the shape. And we know that the maximum and the minimum always occur at one of the corners or vertices of your feasible region. Let's label them. The order I write them down doesn't matter. I'm gonna start in the bottom left corner. That as an ordered pair is 20, 30. And then the next ordered pair is 20 on the X and 60 on the Y. So we have 20, 60. Right, I'm just writing these as X, Y pairs. And then this point right here that I numbered with the three it lines up with the 40 on the X and the 60 on the Y. So that's 40, 60. And then this corner here is 50 on the X and also 50 on the Y. So 50, 50. And finally, this corner there is 50, 30. Now that we have the vertices of the feasible region, we can just transfer those to the table and we need to see which combination of cakes and cookies makes the most money. If you go back to how the variables were defined, X is the number of cakes and Y is the number of cookies. We need to come up with a profit equation though so we can figure out which combination makes the most money. So for that, we have to go back to the question and if we read carefully, it tells us how much each profits. So the profit for each cake is 650 and each batch of cookies is 725. Since cake is the X and it's 650 for the cake, we need 650 with the X. So I'm gonna go plus 6.50 X and then I need plus 7.25 Y because the cookies are the Y's. And now we can just take our five ordered pairs and put them into that expression, replacing the X with the number for the X in the ordered pair and replacing the Y with the number for the Y in the ordered pair. And you can really just type that whole thing into your calculator using the parentheses buttons. And when you do that, this first one ends up equaling 347 Point five. Then I'm going to check each of my points. So next is 20, 60, 20 in the X spot, 60 in the Y spot. Then I type that in my calculator and I got 565. Let's try the next one. Okay, 40 for X and 60 for Y. If we type that into our calculator, that one ends up being $695. Let's try 50, 50. Okay, when you put that one into your calculator, you end up getting 687.5. And finally, the last point, 50 for the X, 30 for the Y. You can type that in and that ends up equaling 542.5.
So now we have all of those profit amounts and we're concerned with maximum profit. We wanna make as much money as possible. So if we look at all five of those numbers, the biggest number there is 695. So that is the combination that we want. So how many cakes is that? Well, let's go back right here. 40 cakes, cakes is X, 60 cookies, and then the maximum profit, that's a dollar amount, is $695.